Bonjour, and welcome to my new Potty Post series, Best Kept Secrets in France. This first episode, we go to Béziers in the south of France. Béziers is France's second oldest city after Marseille and offers an amazing array of history, culture, and a near-perfect lifestyle. We'll visit the Canal du Midi, the Eclus de Fonceron, several fascinating churches, an open-air market, shops, and the best impression to give you an idea of life in this jewel of a city. I'm at the wall of the Cathedral Saint Nazaire overlooking the Orb River and the Orb Plain below. That hilltop in the distance is the location of an ancient Gaelic settlement, the Opidum Densarun. Records indicate that the area was settled continuously from the 6th century BC to the 1st century AD. It was chosen for its proximity to the Via Domitia, which was the ancient stone road that connected Rome to Spain. It also had open views of the countryside, fertile land, and a water source, which was Lake Montedy. Down the hill from the Opidum used to be a swamp area. Monks drained this swamp in the 13th century by making wedge-shaped fields separated by drainage ditches that drained toward the center. From above, it looks like a large wheel or a pie. The water drained out through a hole in the center and was carried off by an underground drainage system. That same system is still in use today. Our visit to Béziers starts here at the Roman Amphitheater, or Old Arena. This amphitheater was built in the first century AD because at that time, Béziers had been designated an R&R &R stop for Roman soldiers, and this was a good way to keep them entertained while they were stationed here. This amphitheater isn't nearly as grand as those you might see in Arles or Nîmes, mainly because the structure was torn down in the third century, and the stones from the amphitheater said to be used to build the town's walls for defense. The Roman provinces in Gaul were entering tumultuous times with the invasion of the Visigoths and Franks, and hilltop towns typically were walled cities. If you drive throughout the Languedoc and also Provence, you'll see many such towns, some called perch villages, with their walls still intact. This is the Place Saint-Cyr, which is a small plaza in the old part of Béziers, dedicated to the martyred Saint Aphrodisius. It's just around the corner from the arena, and in its day probably sat just outside the walls of the arena. My favorite legend of Bézier was about Aphrodisius, a priest who rode his camel from Egypt into Bézier. He lived in a cave on the other side of the old town. San Aphrodisius began preaching to the pagans who lived in Bézier, and one day, he and several of his colleagues were beheaded in this very plaza. Nero was ruler of Rome at the time, and Christians were not very popular. Much of Rome had been destroyed by fire, and Nero blamed this on the Christians. At any rate, Aphrodisius' head was chopped off and kicked into a very large well that stood about where that van is parked now. The water from the well started gushing up, bringing Aphrodisius' head with it. Was this a miracle? Who knows? The spring rains had arrived, the water tables were full, and we think that's probably what made his head gush up out of the well. At any rate, he picked up his head and headed, no pun intended, up Rue Saint-Cyr, to return to the cave where he was living on the other side of Old Bézier, where the Basilica de saint Aphrodis stands today. To commemorate saint Aphrodis, there's a statue of him on the corner of this building, shown holding his head. saint Aphrodis is called a cephalophore, which is a subset of martyrs who are depicted carrying their own heads. Cephalophores presented a problem for the artists painting them. Where exactly do you put a halo on a headless saint? St. Aphrodis' camel became a star in his own right, 
and the citizens of Bézier competed to see who could take care of the camel. According to legend, this was the route that Saint Aphrodis took when he went back to his cob carrying his head after being beheaded. The snail shell is reminiscent of the many snail shells that the residents of Bézier threw at the headless saint as he's made his way back to the cob. This street is called Rue de Tête, or the Street of Heads. It's called the Street of Heads because as our headless saint, Saint Aphrodis, headed back to his cave carrying his head with him, he came across a bunch of stonemasons who started to mock him. Legend has it that when Saint Aphrodis turned to look at the stonemasons, they all turned to stone. This is the entrance to the Basilica San Aphrodis, named after the Saint, Saint Aphrodisius, and the repository for his relics. The last Sunday in April is celebrated as the Saint's Feast Day, which is today. They'll have a church service today in commemoration of the saint, and it's the only time during the year that the church actually has a service because it is still under renovation. Later this morning, a replica of the camel that he rode into town in Bézier back in AD 65 will present itself outside here at the steps of the church and the dignitaries will gather to commemorate the day. The relics are displayed behind the altar. This is the entrance to the crypt, which dates back to Roman times. We'll just go down and take a peek. The windows across the way used to be at street level. So the, what is now the basement of the church was actually at street level. Citizens of Bézier would come and look through those two windows over there to venerate the fallen saint. The ceiling of this crypt dates back to the Roman times and it's carved by hand. Saint Aphrodis. And a picture of Saint Aphrodis martyred. The artists behind the frescoes you see in Bézier are the work of French artist Patrick Calmancy and his team of muralists. Calmancy is considered a street artist, and his technique is called trompe l'oeil, or trick of the eye. He transforms facades around France and beyond into lively scenes depicting persons influential to the history of the town where he paints the murals. We'll run across several of these as we visit Bézier. This is another one of Calmancy's murals on the Allée Paul Riquet in Bézier. It commemorates the tragic death of a young man named Francois Mistral, who was the nephew of celebrated poet Frédéric Mistral. Francois found out that his betrothed, Philippine, who's looking at us from the balcony up there, was having an affair behind his back, and he committed suicide. So his uncle immortalized that situation in one of his works. This church is named Saint Jacques or Saint James because it is on the route to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. It was one of several churches built by Charlemagne after his busy foray into Spain. When the Romeo or pilgrims coming from Rome reached the area around present-day Montpellier, they could choose whether to follow the pilgrim route through the Harol Valley and pass through St. Willem le Désert or the coastal plain route, which passed through Bézier. As you are walking around the old town of Bézier, you may see brass caps embedded in the sidewalk with the words Camin, Romieu, Bézier on them. 
These caps denote that the route of the pilgrims passed this way. In the summer of 2015, the mayor of Bézier, Robert Menard, designated a nearby bed and breakfast to be used by pilgrims making the trek to Santiago de Compostela. This mural shows the pilgrimage routes to the Santiago de Compostela in Spain, the Way of St. James, which is always signified by that fan shop. That is the old bridge or Pont Vieux. The current bridge was built on foundations from an existing Roman bridge. We have a green grocer family that comes to Bézier four days a week with their wonderful assortment of fresh vegetables and fruits from all over Italy, Israel, Spain, Morocco, Costa Rica, and France, of course, all over France. It's uh, strawberry season, as you can see, and asparagus season. This is the Cathedral Saint Nazaire, dating from the 13th century. It was built on the site of a former church destroyed during the Albigensian Crusade in 1209 when the entire town of Béziers, then a population of 20,000, was put to the sword and the city burned. The church at that time was a sanctuary for citizens trying to escape the purge, but it was set on fire and those hiding inside died when the cathedral collapsed into itself. The location was initially the siting of a Roman temple dedicated to Augustus. The first church, built in the 10th century, was in the Roman style, and some of the remaining columns are Roman, but most are in the Gothic style which was prevalent when the cathedral was built from the end of the 13th to 15th centuries. Walls from the Romanesque church were used as a base for this church. Changes made in the 18th century added the Baroque style. Part of the church is constructed over an old cemetery, which seems a common practice for the time. This is the Allée Paul Riquet, and it's Friday, so it's the flower market day. Every Friday, year round. Including cut flowers. Vegetable plants herbs, citrus trees, palms, not anything you could want for gardening. And since it's springtime, everybody's out here enjoying themselves and planning their gardens for the year. In addition to Friday being Flower Day on the Allée, Tuesdays year-round, it's Brocante Day. And brocante is um, used, used furniture and kind of uh, trash and treasures. <laughs> That's what I think of. And then on Saturday, it's the Brocante on steroids because they add antiques to it so it's a, a little bit classier on Saturdays and always bigger these beautiful hydrangeas Oh, these roses. 
these beautiful white roses with just a touch of pink at the center. Gorgeous. And of course, anything you could want to plant in your planters on your terraces or balconies. The Allée Paul Riquet is the main artery of Old Bézier. And a lot happens here. For instance, during the summer months, on Thursday evenings, they have wine tastings where the various wine growers in the area will set up little booths so that you can taste their wines. And there will also be um, street food vendors and live music. And uh, it's just a really great time to come out and enjoy for the whole family. Kids running around. Bonjour. They also have uh, their vintage or antique car show here once a year. And then sometimes they'll do like motorcycle shows or a health fair. Um, or they have one day in the fall of the year where every club or organization in Bézier sets up a booth so that you can walk around and see all the things that are available to join or do in Bézier. Yes, très joli indeed. Hmm. This is the L'Église de la Madeleine, another church where residents of Béziers took refuge during the Albigensian Crusade of 1209. The target of the Crusade was the religious cult of the Cathars that had taken hold in the Occitanie region. The Cathars held beliefs that didn't sit well with Rome, such as they rejected the Catholicism of Rome and believed the earth, because it was evil, was created by Satan. They believed in two gods. The good God was the God of the New Testament and the creator of the spiritual realm, and the God of the Old Testament was evil, a.k.a. Satan. Also, they didn't believe in the Trinity. It is estimated that one million people were killed in the Albigensian Crusade. Not just Cathars, but a significant portion of the population in the south of France. Which brings us to Abbot Arno Armory, the man the Pope, Innocent III, chose to head up the crusade to eradicate the Cathars. The good abbot zealously pursued his task. Béziers was the first stronghold attacked. The Cathars in Béziers were liked by the population, and the citizens of Béziers refused to give them up to the crusaders. So Armory told his soldiers to, quote, kill them all, God will know his own. Thus, 20,000 men, women, and children were put to the sword and the city burned, this church included. Tucked up against l'Église de la Madeleine on Saturdays is the Marché Paisan de Béziers, which is a uh, more casual country market. And later on in the season, the organic or bio market will also be here selling organic produce. This vendor is selling snails or escargot raised here. Over here, goat's cheese made from raw milk. Bonjour. Coquillage vendor selling his mussels and oysters in the shell, eggs and juices, breads, 
Local wine growers. Bézier is the largest wine growing region in the world, you know. And they're getting more respectable every year. And we have different vinegars and syrups. And jams. This is Bézier's covered market, Le Hall, open every day but Monday. It was built in 1891 in the same style as Le Hall in Paris and renovated in 1987. The market houses approximately 21 local merchants and producers. I'm inside Le Hall and uh, just wanted to do a quick run through so you could see some of the produce that's for sale here. When I buy whole chickens, I always ask them to take the feet and the heads off. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> Merci. <laughs> non, c'est bon. Seafood. We are only 15 minutes from the Mediterranean. That's a big fella. This is where we buy our olives. I always get the black ones in the Herbe de Provence. They're my very favorite. Great with cheese and hummus. How's that for a real a sausage? This vendor sells specialties from Sicily. No, buongiorno. And they're quite excellent. My husband and I bought numerous entrees and desserts from here and never been disappointed. Excellent. Makes me want to visit Sicily, I'll tell you that. Fresh pasta that they make, and the focaccias, mmm yum, just smells wonderful. And of course you have someone selling fresh produce, vegetables and fruits. Overall, I find the prices here a little bit higher in price than our green grocer down on the L.A. Paul Briquet, but they always look uh, very nice and fresh, nicely presented. This is the Hotel de Ville. where our mayor holds office. I think it's a really handsome building, well-preserved. 
This is the facade of the 15th century church, Church of the Blue Penitents. You can see a lot of the scroll work has been eroded, but it's a lovely church and uh, very nice to come and sit in on a Friday afternoon when they're getting ready for mass and it's full of incense and total calm. It's imperative to have a good bakery you can count on when you live in France. And we found this little treasure just up the street from where we live. The weekends it's especially amazing because of the desserts that they put out. Let's take a look and see what they have today. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. These creamy ones look especially good. Real whipped cream, by the way. The construction for the Canal de Midi started in 1666 and was completed in 1681, connecting the Atlantic Ocean at Bordeaux via the Garonne Canal and Garonne River in Toulouse to the Mediterranean by way of the Etang du Ta near Set. It is 150 miles long and one of the oldest canals in Europe still in use. Before the Canal du Midi was built, ships of trade and the king's ships would have to sail around the Iberian Peninsula to reach the ports on the Mediterranean. This was costly because the ships had to pay a toll to Spain to pass through Iberia, and it was also costly because of the pirates, notably the Barbary pirates. Midi refers to the southern portion of France from Italy along the Mediterranean over to the Atlantic. Today, the canal is used for tourism and housing. There are quite a number of houseboats permanently lodged on the canal. A maintained bike path runs from Set to Bordeaux. More importantly, the canal is used for agricultural irrigation during the dry season. Hundreds of irrigation pumps have been installed along the canal, which can irrigate up to 40,000 hectares of land. That translates into a lot of wine. Au revoir. I can't get a word in edgewise over this duck. I don't know why he's so upset or what he's trying to say. This is the local feedlot for the ducks and I don't know what those are, water rats or muskrats or, but look how they hold them in their little paws. And the female ducks are by far the noisiest. I'm standing at the Orb Aqueduct where the Canal de Midi crosses the Orb River. This aqueduct was built in 1854. There are walking paths on each side of the canal. Before the aqueduct was built, the Canal de Midi joined the Orb River, but the Orb was at times dangerous and unpredictable. So this aqueduct carrying the Canal de Midi was built to circumvent the problem. There are 63 locks on the Canal de Midi, but by far the most famous are those of the Ecluse de Fonceron in Béziers. This staircase of nine locks were built from 1688 to 1689, largely by women from the Pyrenees Mountains who understood how to build weirs. The Ecluse de Fonceron 
is the third most popular tourist site in the languedoc Roussillon. The technical feat of the locks overcame the descent from the Garonne River to the Orb River, thus allowing ships to make the passage. And we've got a boat queued up, waiting to come through the locks. This boat's waiting to go through, waiting for the water to fill in so they can move up to the next level. There's a gate opening into the next chamber. And the boat's moving up here. It takes about an hour to make your way through the locks, depending on the traffic. Still a lot shorter than sailing around the tip of Spain <laughs> to get to the Mediterranean. Pierre-Paul Riquet is a native of Bézier and by virtue of the fact that he created, designed, uh, was responsible for producing finally the Canal de Midi where so many others had failed, he succeeded, makes him a really big deal in this area. Pierre-Paul Riquet, the Canal de Midi. Street names can tell a lot about a town. And I think it gives you insight into the history as well. This is called the Impasse du Chat, or the Alley of the Cat. This is the Rue du Mouton, the Street of the Sheep. This is the Bézier Theatre, founded in 1842. It was designed in what is called the Italianate style. The façade is decorated with bas-reliefs by French sculptor David Dangere. It seats approximately 600 and is the only remaining theatre in France with what is called a candy box interior. This is one of the main entrances to the Parc de Poets. The Parc de Poets opened in 1867 and was created to connect the theater, which sits at the top of the Allée Paul Riquet, with the train station, which is at the bottom of the park and across the street. The park was designed by the Swiss landscape architects, the Bueller brothers, who also designed the Bois de Boulogne in Paris. It is 50,000 square meters of parkland, or five hectares and contains more than 70 exotic species of plants and trees, as well as a small lake that is home to a paddling of ducks and a couple of swans year-round. It's called the Parc de Poets because the park features short bios and statues of writers and poets who were native sons of Bézier. And many of the busts were sculpted by native son, Anne Jalbert. Here we have a monument to Jean Moulin, who was born in Bézier and was a hero of the resistance against the Nazis. Moulin is credited with uniting the various branches of the French resistance under Charles de Gaulle. 
Mulan was captured and tortured by the Gestapo on a daily basis and tried to commit suicide by slitting his throat with a piece of broken glass. His attempt was unsuccessful. He escaped and was eventually caught again. He died in the custody of the Gestapo. They alleged it was due to another suicide attempt. Pictures of Moulin always show him wearing a fedora and a scarf around his neck, which he wore in real life to hide the scar from his first attempt at suicide. This is the top side of Angel Bear's statue, sculpture, and fountain, the Titan. In the summertime, when, under normal circumstances, they have uh, little children's rides, merry-go-round, just kid stuff. You can see a child's playground over there. A couple of different ponds with some waterfowl here. The big lake is further down. We're going to take a look at this big statue by Angel Bear. I don't fall in the water. <laughs> Quite something. This bronze statue represents Titan carrying the weight of the world. And as I said, it was designed by Jean Angelbert in 1877. We've already looked at the back of the statue. Here we have two caryatids in the front of the fountains. One representing youth, the other representing old age. The fountain was installed in the Parc de Poets in 1892. And when World War II broke out, the sculpture was taken and hidden to avoid its bronze being requisitioned for war effort, i.e. probably melted down into bullets. Really spectacular. There's a dual hydraulic circuit between this fountain and the lake for recycling the water that's used by each. This amphitheater is also located in the Parc de Poets. And during Bézier's Feria in August, they set up a stage down there and have flamenco dancing at night under the stars. And it's just absolutely magical. And there goes one of the swans launching off. <laughs> There's usually quite a few ducks and these two swans, there used to be an entire family of swan. But the seagulls would come and try and kill the babies. So they moved the mother and the babies to a safer location and kept father and his son here. There's one down there, I guess that's the son taking a nap in the sun. The people of Bézier just love their park. Sundays especially are full of families and uh, seems to be a favorite place for Moroccan weddings. They come here to have wedding pictures taken and to celebrate. A wonderful addition to Bézier. Quite special. As always, thanks for joining me on my wander through Bézier, which is featured on my new app, Hottie Posh. Hottie Posh is a fantastic little travel guide for must-see destinations in the Languedoc, Roussillon, and Provence, which uniquely includes GPS locations, descriptions, and ratings of all of the public toilets in the locations visited on the app. 
written in five languages. It's an app for people on the go, like yourselves, who have to go. So if you're out and about in the south of France, take Potty Poche with you. Available on Apple and Google. And I leave you with this. The marrow of life is not your usual trick. Thank you.